I hope you guys all had a marvelous Monday. I had a really good day today. I worked on my 40 challenge questions that I received from um, Van Life of Gina, and I put that short little video out there. So that was a little bit of fun today. I got to use some um, my new camera, so the imaging on that one was a lot better than what you're seeing me on here right now. It's so nice to see so many in the house already today. Bob's adventure is back. And he was saying that the world famous Vita is on tonight. Now that has to be one of the nicest confidence boosters before a show I've ever seen. Thank you so much for that, Bob. Boondocking with Boomer. Hello, lads. And no, I am not drinking green tea water. Um, yes, this gentleman is very interesting and I'm really glad that you're here because you are absolutely going to enjoy meeting him. Okay, auntie's in the house. I can get started. Countdown is on. Nice to see you, Karen. It was so nice to have you pop on the live stream the other day too. I thought that was really awesome. We'll have to do that again. Nursing our travel bug. Howdy, 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 howdy. We got some people saying hello to one another. Van City Adventure, thank you for being here. And thank you as well for popping on the live stream. Same as Sonia, the RV DJ. A lot of you guys were doing some really wonderful things on Saturday, coming onto my live stream, encouraging me to do it longer to get some more watch time. And I ended up getting, I think, 170 watch hours in 13 hours. <laughs> And I was pretty much a write-off for the day yesterday. Stinky Banana, thank you so much for being here. Going Green Mom, hello, hello. Ray with Van Life Rocks, thank you so much for being here as well. Diva, I think I missed something there. Daryl, you're going to have to explain. And thank you, Going Green Mom. Water's awesome. I know you guys were all on me over drinking Pepsi, and there's so many worse things I could be drinking. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You guys are great. So today's guest is Steampunk Steve, and I am so excited for you guys to get to meet him. He is quite a character. I really love talking to him, and I'm not even going to wait any longer. Are you ready, Steve? I'll pull you right up. Hello, my friend. How are you? Hi, everybody. Whew, it is so exciting having you here. Well, you just paused on me. You just paused on me. You know, hmm. yesterday and today, we didn't have that happen at all. Uh, well, I'm in a college town, so maybe they're swamping the, the tower right now. Who knows? You know, that is an issue when a person's out on the road and stuff, or you're doing the whole nomad thing. Even You can have service great one time a day, and it's different another time a day. Yep. And weekends sometimes are better than, uh, than uh, you know, weeknights. So, oh, yeah. who knows? We'll live with it. Especially if there's a lot of kids there. So, how did you get the name Steampunk, Steve? Well, my nephew was getting married and they decided they wanted to have a steampunk themed wedding. So they called me, the craziest uncle they have, and asked if I would be the officiant. And I said, sure, give me 20 minutes online. I can be a preacher, which <laughs> basically that's about how long it took. And um, I've always enjoyed interesting trends and steampunk is just crazy enough that I really liked it. So I, it gave me the excuse to jump in. So I became steampunk, Steve, the pastor of the church of the everlasting bacon. <laughs> and people have said, are you really a minister? And I can actually pull out a card and show that I'm actually card carrying Minister, it's the only wedding I ever ever performed, and I just ran with it. So, and so but is that, I, that a lifetime deal now? You can marry people. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So we haven't haven't had. Uh, we've talked about it a couple times of at Schooly Palooza. Wouldn't it be fun to have a wedding? But we haven't had anybody that wanted to do that yet. There's a couple actually. There's 
I don't know, four or five of us uh, in schoolies that are that are pastor, you know, basically, yeah, we paid the 20 bucks, we became a minister. So um, <laughs> one, of, one of the guys that worked for me at the time was a very devout Christian. And I showed him the card. And he goes, this can't be real. This can't be legal that you can just <laughs> do that. I'm like, perfectly legal in all 50 states. So wow. that's how I became Steampunk Steve. So do you like do the whole outfit and everything? Yeah, I've got three personas. Uh, one is the pastor. So I've got a frock coat, the top hat. Um, you know, if I could actually, next time I'm in New Orleans, I want to put on the whole outfit, but leave the goggles and just wander the town dressed in 18, 1800s garb and see what happens. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a whole lot of people want to take, take pictures with me because every time I put that on, they do. Yeah. Um, the other one is I've got a big white lab coat and gauntlets and the goggles and a different top hat. <laughs> and it's my mad scientist outfit. And then my third one is I have an army surplus parka with the hood, the fringe and all that. So that's my steampunk Arctic Explorer outfit. <laughs> so depends on how the mood is, you know, strikes me. I can, I can do any of that. So. Oh, you're so creative badge. Everyone needs one says he misses you, oh. buddy. Hey buddy. Where, where's where's my uh, maple marshmallows? Do you have you ever have, has he ever told you how expensive it is for us to mail stuff from Canada uh, yeah, to I the know. states? I've seen him about it every time that he smuggles them down here every year. And, but. <laughs> you know what? I didn't even know there was such thing until I heard him talking about it. Yeah, I didn't know until he had it in Squatterville in in uh, Arizona. Squatterville is is a little section of desert that we all sort of piled into. So Squatterville isn't the same as Slab City, right? No, Slab City's over in California. Oh. Squatterville is just a, a corner near where we do Schoolie Palooza last year. Um, it's just a spot. And <laughs> I think Squatterville actually started up there where Badge is. So he, he's be, he'd be the one to tell you the history of that. But <laughs> he's the mayor of Squatterville. I'm just, a re, you know, the resident. Well. Wow. You're an officiant, right? You're the you're the one that there can marry go. everyone. So oh, yeah, that's you some go. authority. Yep, bless the buses, all that good stuff. We had another <laughs> Canadian viewer going. Do we have maple marshmallows? Yes, Karen, we do. We do. We're gonna have to find out yeah. where to get them from. We're gonna have to start googling. Yeah, we don't have them down here. <laughs> I imagine it would be big and like. Ontario or something because that's where Ottawa is or capital city and actually you're not very far from Ontario right now are you no I'm closer to Rochester New York but I'm about my I actually about halfway between Buffalo and Rochester New York so from here I could get to the border in Niagara Falls in about 45 minutes oh so, wow if I was allowed in the country <laughs> well if it was up to me you'd be here yeah well I've told you before is that my wife and I, when we first met, would just decide that we wanted to go for lunch in, in uh, Toronto. So we just hop in the car and drive up. It was an hour and a half drive and we'd have lunch and come back. I think that's so romantic. Oh, let's just go to another country and have lunch uh, today. Well, we, had a, we had a favorite restaurant on Young Street and we'd just always go there. Oh, that is so cool. Yep, so cool. We, How did you guys meet? Uh, well, I always said she picked me up in a bar. We met the old-fashioned way. Um, <laughs> there's a whole long story. The short version is the very first night that I ever drank tequila was the night I met her. I went back the next week. She was not there. I wasn't drinking tequila. The following week, I drank more tequila, and there she was. So I figured... <laughs> If this is the kind of tequila dream I'm going to have, I'm going to keep drinking this stuff. And yeah. years later, our kids wondered why there are so many bottles of tequila in our liquor cabinet. It's like, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, There's a much longer version of that, but that's a short one. And, I'm going to uh, start drinking tequila. 
Yeah, it, Maybe I'll it, find my Mr. Someone across the bar. Yeah, actually, know. now you know it used to be people didn't want to admit that they met someone in a bar, and now it's like that almost feels like it's better to say than online. What's weird is I went back. That bar closed after a couple of years. Um, actually, when they raised the drinking age here in New York, it they couldn't get the college students anymore, and the bar closed, and it became a feed store. And I went in one time and I was standing in the dog food section and a guy came over and asked me if, uh, you know, could I help you? I said, no, I'm just remem reminiscing as that I met my wife right here when it was the bar. And they went, oh, okay. <laughs> and you're standing in the dog food section. Oh, yeah. And now it's a church and oh. I haven't gone back to stand in the church and do the same thing. Like when this was a bar, yeah, because I'm, I don't, I don't know if that would go over as well. So. <laughs> you just have the cutest stories the cutest stories so what can i say what possessed you to convert an amp or uh, i'm gonna say an ambulance that's me to convert a bus like how long have you had your conversion well i i couldn't find an ambulance i'm kidding uh oops <laughs> my my son mentions that um i've been talking about doing this his whole life that I wanted, he's 39. I wanted to turn a bus into an RV because they don't like the way RVs are laid out. Just never liked it. Mm -hmm. This way I could do it the way I wanted and travel all over the country. I trace it back to watching the movie Woodstock and seeing all the cool buses. Movie and, Woodstock, I'm gonna have to watch that. Can I Google yeah, it? When it well, when it first came out, what, Woodstock, was in 69 and the movie came out 71 i think okay. so yeah i i tend to watch it on the anniversary of woodstock every year Aww. and just enjoy the music well i'm a movie buff mm -hmm. so i watched the longest day on d-day i watched woodstock um I have a, my family has a Thanksgiving movie that has absolutely nothing to do with Thanksgiving. It's called Streets of Fire. It's Streets of Fire, a rock and roll fable. And oh. people don't know about it. It's just, it's a cult classic. Uh, they never made it a second one. Uh, but, yeah. it, oh. Cult movie. Also commonly referred to as a cult classic. What's that? Oh. What do I say? Hey, Google, be quiet. My son <laughs> plugged this hey, Google in the kitchen, and it must have hurt you, and it started spitting out information. <laughs> I've never heard it well, just do that. Movie? That is creepy because you never said Google at the, no. when you were talking about it. So how it's listening. Oh, great. <laughs> and did you know there's 29 people listening to this too? There's what? And even there's we got 29 people here watching you. Cool. I'm, cool. And then Google had to start doing that. That is oh, crazy. Do. Don't worry about it, Gina. You're not that late. Oh, who are we talking to? Oh, Gina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's quite a few boondocking. Charlie's here. Kid74 is here. Camping Therapy. Um, who else popped in while we were talking? Linda Barker. Oops. Uh, Steampunk Steve, are you the new Wavy Gravy? What does that mean? Uh, wavy Gravy was a fixture at Woodstock. I didn't go to Woodstock, by the way, because I was 16 and I was a good boy. My mom said no. Mm -hmm. 30 years later, I mentioned I was thinking about running away and she said, yeah, you should have. Thanks, mom. Thanks. <laughs> so I actually got to the site of Woodstock two years ago. Um, I think I said, I think the title of that video was 49 years late, but I made it. Um, it's yeah. So no, I'm not wavy gravy. Although I'd love to meet the guy. He's still around. Oh, okay. So the bus conversion. Yes. Um, the, what, what pushed me over the edge to actually do it was I was getting fired from a job. 
Uh, I got put on administrative leave, which I know means we got paperwork to do before we can let you go. <laughs> so I started looking around, found this bus on Craigslist, went over, started it up, crawled underneath, saw no leaks and went, all right, it's mine. And uh, I decided that that was a good, I was 62 and I decided that was a good time to retire and not really work anymore. I did, I did get a job. Huh? Okay, wait, my, I'm, my math's a little rusty, but if you retired in 1962. No, 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 I was 62. Oh, okay, because I'm, yeah, like, I'm not my that old. Goodness, this is I'm not old. making this, any sense. This throws you off, but this is, by the <laughs> way, this is not gray. This is platinum blonde. Oh, <laughs> I got a little sprinkling of platinum in here, too. Yeah, my, my wife was a brunette, and when it started getting gray in it, I decided her hair was tweed. Tweed? I like tweed colored hair. So. <laughs> But, well, if um, she colored it, it would look like a skunk down the middle. Well, she, she, people would ask her why she didn't color it. She just said that uh, she earned every one of them. Yeah. And uh, she didn't have any until her son was born, and I didn't have any until her daughter was born. <laughs> so, oh, see what so cute. So, how, but, how long did it take you to build out the bus? Well, uh, when I bought it, it was July. We were living in Ohio. Um, I got rid of a whole lot of stuff. And it was like, if it doesn't fit on the bus, I got to get rid of it. So okay. I got rid of a lot of things, uh, like 1,600 movies on, on VHS. I didn't have a player anymore. Um, we moved back to New York. We lived in it for seven weeks in a state park. Uh, you're only supposed to stay two weeks. Uh -huh. So I stayed two weeks and she stayed two weeks. Then I stayed two weeks and it got to be Labor Day and they were book solid. So we had to leave. Um, moved to a friend of ours was renting out a half a house. So we moved to the yard and I helped him bring it back up to code because he had to evict some people and they just trashed it. So yeah, I like building stuff and helping him get it livable for me. So um, that first summer of having it was more, I had a mattress on the floor. There was a couch that she slept on. I cooked outside. We had a table and a coffee maker and a microwave and a little refrigerator. But I could lay in it and visualize what I wanted to do. So yeah. in my head, I was moving things around. Um, the following year, because we're Western New York, so nothing gets done from November till late March. It's just too darn cold. I hear you. So I started the following year and gutted it and painted it. And pretty much that was about all I did the first year. And then the second year, she passed away that winter. And then the following spring, I just went for it and built the whole inside. Um I was working afternoons at a hotel, so I got, um, I would get up in the morning at nine, work on the bus till noon, feed us, get ready for work, go to work, you know, every day I'd do that. And then we had our grandson, he was born right then. So um, I had him one day a week. So I had one full day and a whole lot of little days. So I was working on it about 20 hours a week. Yeah. Total time, full time working 40 hour weeks on it, it would have been three months. But it was stretched over two years. Yeah. Well, you I know. mean, it, it, I think it would have been difficult to already be living in it and then try to build it at the same time. I was going to do that, but I'm glad I didn't. It would have been difficult. Um, matter of fact, last winter, I helped a friend Aaron uh, build her bus. And we were in the desert in Arizona, and in uh, February and March, it gets pretty windy. And the tent she had uh, just got tore up. So she ended oh. up, we, we focused on getting a couple of beds in there. And so her and one of the daughters would sleep in there. A um, couple nights over on my couch, one of the other, the other daughter would sleep on the couch over here. And... 
you know, get up in the morning, they would put stuff away enough so we could work on it. And it was a little difficult, but mm -hmm. you do what you got to do to get through. So, yeah. Yeah, you do what you got to do. So what is your plan now? Somewhere in Arizona, <laughs> I think, or Colorado. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't talked to her in a couple of weeks. Um, she had some more to do on the bus and life got in the way. So I, not, mm -hmm. I think the bus might be parked for a little bit. And, you know, if she doesn't get to finish it, well, next winter, I'll be back in Arizona. Yeah. So eventually. I'm just going to check some of our, I know I had someone repeated a comment twice and I keep missing it. So we got thrash metal and fun riffs here. Your Gina is here. Badge. Papa Juice RV has popped in. Um, I'm just going to scroll back. We have... Rayleigh Creative Travel. Thank you so much, buddy, for being here. Shanna Craft. Now, where was that question? I know it was Boondocking with Boomer that left the question. I'm wondering where the cake is, too. He you know, he bugs me all the time, Steve, about cake. He says, I stole his cake. And I said, well, you come up to Canada, and I'll make you a new one. Oh, okay. There you here go. we go. Does Steve see Mortal Engines, and did he like it? I don't know what that is, so... Um, I didn't see it. It's on my list of, of movies to find. Um, I, I tend to haunt the, uh, 374 and $5 bins at Walmart. And I had a hard drive with probably 700 movies on it. Mm -hmm. that there was a spike when my charge controller died that fried that hard drive. Um, I now have this one, little one. It's, it says movies because there's about 600 movies on here. Uh, I went through my son's collection. Since then, I picked up a few more, and uh, I just keep adding movies to it. So I get places where I can't get Netflix mm -hmm. uh, or any of that stuff. So I've got all those movies, and I don't mind watching them. Some of them I've never seen. I've just... I know about it or I haven't seen him in 10, 15 years. So, yeah. Gina wants to know if it was on Netflix. So maybe Boondocking with Boomer can answer that. It was a movie. Yeah. So, what are you going to do when winter comes? Sorry? What are you going to do when winter comes? Run away from snow. <laughs> I wish I was running away from snow, but we're like we're well, going to said Slab City. When do you plan on heading no, out? Actually, we're not no, not Slab I'm, City, um, Squattersville. Squatterville. Eventually, Squatterville. Uh, right now, tomorrow morning, actually, I am headed south, and expect more videos along the way. Um, I'm gonna, uh, Jamie, we're gonna bus. Do you know Julie? Yeah, that's actually how I'm headed to, to Jamie's, uh, maybe. Uh, Jamie's down in Georgia. He does the van build. He's been doing it out in Arizona for a couple of years. That's enigmatic nomadic. That's him. Okay. And um, he just, his video, he's got about to start working on a bus for somebody. And I've got a friend in Georgia who really needs a lot of help. Um, and if she can get... Hopefully she gets a box truck or a step van and I'm going to make it livable for her to get her out of this, where she is. Yeah. And, That's um, a lady you were telling me about before. Yeah. 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 She's got a, um, uh, electromagnetic hypersensitivity syndrome, which means, uh, any electromagnetic radiation is, causes her pain. And the desert in Arizona, and there's dead spaces she can get to where she won't have any power lines, no Wi-Fi, no cell signals, none of that. Even if it's just weak, that'll help her. Um, but she doesn't know how to do, doesn't know how to build stuff, and she couldn't handle the power tools and things. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of, and there's... I've been thinking about it for a while and talking to her, trying to figure out ways to help her. So 
she's on my list. She's down in Georgia too. So I'm either headed to her or Jamie or both. Um, who is that? Uh, Gina said that he announced today that the van build won't be till spring. Right. And I was just going to say that is that um, they pushed it back because Georgia's still um, locked down till the 15th of October, at least. So no big gatherings. Um, so he's going to push it back to spring. And unfortunately, I won't be able to help because I'll, I'll be in the West. Yeah. So um, I'm debating whether to go to Florida. Um, I haven't been to the Everglades in, in a couple of years. And I've got a friend who lives just outside of the Everglades. By the way, you know, little plug. If you're ever going to the Everglades, stop at a fruit stand called Robert is Here and get one of their milkshakes. It, they do exotic fruits. They'll have 25 different milkshakes, and I've only tried like four of them. Um, really? It's well worth the stop. And Robert Jr. is a friend of mine. So now, after he's also a schoolie owner, he saw me pull up with a schoolie. I end up giving half the staff a, a tour every year when I, every time I'm down there. So, um, you know, shameless plug to my buddy, but. Awesome. Yeah. So, That's fantastic. Uh, well, you have a sweet tooth a bit, don't you? What's this deal you have with your grandson? Uh, well, my grandson turns six on Friday. And we were going to do it this year, but decided we really couldn't. Um, we're going to do an ultimate ice cream tour of the Adirondack Mountains. Um, somebody published something online, and they listed these 15 different ice cream places in this big loop. And I went, they missed a couple. I lived up there for a few years and I, they did get a couple good ones, but there's a few that they missed. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was going to be a, maybe a two week thing. My daughter's saying you're taking them for a month. So, <laughs> okay. As long as he's okay with it, we'll do this. And so next year, late summer, early fall, look for videos of uh, grandpa, uh, rating ice cream shops and grandson rating ice cream shops. I'm sure our scales might be a little different. But. <laughs> well, I'm excited to watch it. I think you sound like just the best grandpa ever. I've told my daughter that my my plan is, and we were actually talking about this tonight and uh, about doing this every year, not that tour, but taking him on a trip. You know, we're going to go explore somewhere. Yeah. And he goes, I said something something about when he's 18. He goes, when I'm 18, I'll be able to drive. I said, yeah, when you're 18, I'll be 80 so or 79 or 80. So maybe you'll be driving me around in the bus. And hey, he's that like, sounds like a great deal. That sounds good. Yeah. If it, it might not be the same bus. I'm not sure this will last another, you know, 12 years, but who knows? <laughs> So you're still in the original one that you built out. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, um, as of American Thanksgiving, I will be, uh, it'll be my fourth anniversary on the road. Wow. And I've hit all 48 of the lower, lower 48 States. Um, just touched a couple of them. So I still got to go back and do a little more exploring. Um, but it's going to be a long time before I run out of new places to see. Do you ever miss sticks and bricks after four years? Uh, sorry, do I miss what? Do you miss a house after four years? No. 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 Um, actually, somebody asked me a couple of years ago, what do I do when it rains? And I'm like, I haven't seen rain in a year. I look at the forecast and it's going to rain. I leave. <laughs> um, I've driven out of the rain until I got into the sun again a couple of days. But um just being able to change the view outside the window. Um, if I get to a pretty spot, I'll stay there. Um, I, actually, the first year I was on the road, I was trying to get around Mount Hood in Oregon. And I Forest Service Road, came around the corner, there's 16 inches of snow. And I went, <laughs> no, I am not, I don't know what's over the hill. I'm yeah. not going through that. So I, I did a like 27 point turn on this narrow road. <laughs> Got on this other road and 
came upon this beautiful campsite right next to this stream and decided to spend a couple days. And that's just it. I don't have any place I have to be at any particular time, pretty much. Um, my One of my nieces is getting married here next year in October. So I definitely will be back here for that. But, you know, between now and then, grandson's birthday here mm -hmm. in the spring, my granddaughter in Utah. So that works out. That's not too much to have to work around. Yeah. Yep. And I tell people, I, you know, I, between Rochester and Buffalo and now, you know, halfway, we got a lot of snow. And I remember years where I would throw my son up on top of the pile next to the driveway so he could shovel that off so I had someplace to throw snow. I don't want to do that anymore. I, I like well-behaved snow. You know, it's <laughs> over there on a mountain. I can see it. Isn't it pretty? Let's go visit it and not shovel it and come back here where it's warm. Yeah. So that's that's my life. I don't miss the maintenance on a on a bus is not that big a deal. It's just like maintenance on a car. And I only drive it sounds like I drive a lot. I'm like seventeen thousand miles average every year, which I put more than that on just driving back and forth to work. Yeah. So, yeah. But do you ever, like, do you usually camp around other people or do you keep yourself more? Like, if you, <laughs> which is your preference? I, I, I'm laughing because I sometimes call myself a nomadic hermit. Is, uh, there's Tipsy Gypsy. Yep. She's saying hello. Um, Patricia. Yep. And, uh, I don't know if she told you about Badge and I fixing her door, but that's a fun story. <gasps> that um, was you. She, cause she got hit. Side yeah, side, sort of, or hit from the side. Yeah, she got hit, crushed, crunched her door. She came over. She was coming to badge to get her tail lights, figured out why the stoplights or the brake lights weren't working, and that happened. And badge and I, badge was helping her with that. And I'm looking at the door and uh, to clean it up the language a little bit. He came over and said, What do you think? I said, Yeah, you're screwed. There's nothing we can do about it. And Badge goes, yeah, let me grab some tools. And him and I carved it all up, got it rid of it, and then said, you know, it's getting dark. We should probably figure out how to close this hole up. And I went, well, there's a meth lab that's right over there. We could just get some wood from that. <laughs> it was all crushed down. We went over. That didn't work. And went to the next pile of debris in the desert. And it was a pace arrow. And there was a door that was perfect. And that's the door she's got on the side of her bus now. Is that that door, Patricia? Come on, yeah. It's been two years. Get a window in it, will you? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I forgot what I was talking about before I got off. Oh my, gosh, that yeah. Story. Um. Oh, RB Underway is here. Hello, Michael McReynolds. Hello, Mima Matters is here as well. Um, we were talking about. <laughs> Somebody help oh, us here. My goodness look at the two of us aren't we a pair you know what it's so funny when i've sat and watched all these van life videos and stuff i don't realize who knows who and stuff and now that i'm doing a lot of interviews it's really interesting because now you'll say something about two other people i'm like oh yeah i've met them online but like yeah. when i can hit the road and come into the states i am so excited to meet every one of you and it's so nice that i have that to look forward to well michael from navigation nowhere Mm -hmm. uh, him and I have been friends online for a couple of years, and Badge brought him over just before Schoolie Palooza, and we met. And I just, just two weeks ago, was up in the Adirondacks visiting him and, on his latest build. So, yeah, I mean, I, it's fun. I walked around Schoolie Palooza and have people just yelling, hey, Steampunk Steve. And I'm like, hi, uh, who are you? <laughs> but they know but, you. You know, yeah. Um, actually, somebody came up to me at the van build and asked me where somebody else was. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know where they are. And they went, well, everybody knows you. I said, yeah, everybody knows me. I don't know everybody. <laughs> so I remember what we were talking about before. Do you prefer to travel on your own or do you get oh, lonely yeah. or do you travel with people? Um, usually I'm traveling by myself. Like I said, I call myself a nomadic hermit sometimes because I travel all over, but I really don't camp near a lot of people. Um, 
just I, the gatherings and things like that. I love going to, I love meeting new people. Mm -hmm. Um, and wherever I go, I'm, I'm making friends, uh, you know, so it's, you know, I, I hand my card out to everybody that I meet. I had people, I had somebody on the highway a month and a half ago pulled up next to me, beep their horn, and they're holding up their phone with a picture of me talking to somebody on it. And then the, I waved and they take <laughs> off. And I'm like, it's like what they know you? <laughs> I saw me, but I couldn't tell if I was talking to the, the woman who was holding the phone up or somebody else, or it was probably at Schoolie Palooza. Could have been anywhere. Um, I've had people pull up to me at uh, a uh, Flying J at the dump station and go, hey, my wife and I watch all your videos. So the coolest time, though, was in North Carolina. I was staying in a Walmart parking lot. Got permission. Always ask. Okay. And then at quarter after 11, there's banging on my door. And there's two lady cops shine their flashlight in at me. And I yelled at them to get the flashlight on my eyes so I didn't trip. Came down, they said, you have to leave. I'm like, but I got permission. And they said, no, the night manager wants the whole parking lot cleaned out. Because the people back there had been here for two weeks and they were trashing the place, mm -hmm. which I hate. I tend to pick up after these idiots. Um, so I said, all right, fine. You know, let me put my clothes on, put some stuff away, get ready to go. And I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to go. And this cop car pulls up in front of me and a sergeant comes running around. And I'm like, they told me to leave. It's fine. He goes, no, no, Steampunk Steve, my wife and I love your videos. <laughs> and I'm like, cool. Does that mean I can stay? He goes, nope. <laughs> so, but he just had to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I went back. I said, hang on. I went back. I grabbed a sticker. One of my stickers, I came up and the two lady cops were coming over to back the sergeant up because maybe I'm giving them a hassle or something. And I go, I hold the sticker on and I went, they're kicking me out. They don't get one of these, but you're a nice guy. And he gave him the <laughs> sticker. And that was the coolest thing. Uh, and I, I, he told me where I could go. He told me a nice spot to spend the night and Aww. you know how to get there. And it was, yeah, it was a place that was full of truckers, but. The way my bus is set up and the fact that I'm half deaf, when I'm in my bed, truckers leave. They park right next to me. I don't hear them. Yeah. So, you know, I don't, mind, I don't mind that kind of thing. So We have some more people popping in. Castle Hives is here and Michael McReynolds, RV Ash is in April. Cool. <laughs> wow, you brought a full house with you. I I like Gino with it's nice to socialize, but it's great to go back to your bus and decompress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I pulled in a couple of spots where I didn't even get off the bus. And I was actually Why? telling, oh, just because it, long day of driving and I just wanted to sit back and relax. I've always got a book. We're just relaxing, you know, and it's a, a campsite. Um it was a spot to stay a lot of times like Walmart parking lots. Those are the places I stay if I'm trying to get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. But I also only drive about three hours a day. I get on the road around nine after school and, you know, pretty much the buses are off the roads and all the moms are out shopping and dads or moms are at work and, you know, mm -hmm. no traffic. And then by noon, I found a spot to spend the night. And uh, I may go out for a walk. I've been walking a lot. So I'm um, trying to do like four miles, a, at least four miles a day. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. Well, I started I it. Do it. <laughs> I started it in the, the first of the year. And um, because I, well, what I've been thinking about it, talking about it for a while. Uh, my daughter in law just rolls her eyes. She's a, a personal trainer and a nutritionist. And every time I'm visiting, I'm like, yeah, we've already had this conversation. Um, she's like, yeah, so do it. And <laughs> I, the doctor did uh, blood work, found out that 
my A1C was 6.7, which puts me into the diabetic range. Oh. And they said, I said, what do I do? They said, cut out carbs. I said, well, if I'm cut out carbs, I'm going to go full ho whole hog on it and go pretty much keto and try to lose some weight. And part of that was exercise. And easiest exercise for me is just walking. But so, you did go keto? Yep. And from, I don't know what I weighed last January. I know a year ago, May, I was at 267 and now I'm 216. So I'm down 50, what, 51 pounds, 52 pounds, something like that. And so, are you still are you still eating that way? Mostly, <laughs> not the last. Except week, for the ice I'm, cream tour you're going to be having with the grandson. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> well, going out to dinner with my daughter and you know his birthday party. Yeah, those cupcakes are not keto friendly, <laughs> but they were really good. Do you um, feel like you have more energy eating keto? Not a problem. Yeah, not a problem. Is it it's different? For like you Sorry? cook everything in your bus, so does that make meal preparation much different? Not at all. Oh. Nope. The only thing that um, I used to base a lot of my meals around uh, rice, potatoes, and noodles. Mm -hmm. And then what kind of meat do I want with it? And then a little bit of vegetables. Well, now I'm cooking a lot of vegetables. I'm still having the meat. But I, I know... Uh, a bus, a schoolie friend of mine's girlfriend's a, a retired cardiac uh, surgeon, and she cringes when she hears about me cooking up a bunch of bacon and then throwing the veggies into the bacon fat and the big fat steak. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is not stuff to make her happy, but it's not that hard. I, I've got a um, decent size 12 volt refrigerator. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, badge. Um, <laughs> so you have yeah, a refrigerator. It, does it keep your vegetables that you need for a certain amount of time? And yeah, I, I've got. Uh, it's a twelve volt chest refrigerator freezer. So there's always a big bag of frozen vegetables. Um, I tend to grab California blend because now I got broccoli and cauliflower and carrots and. I can throw peppers and, and onions in with all that or mushrooms sometimes. And I can vary it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I, I asparagus, eat a lot of asparagus. I love asparagus. So asparagus mm -hmm. and broccoli are probably my favorite things. Um, once in a while, I treat myself to some corn. <laughs> but, you know, it's not hard. Uh, lunches are lunch and meat and cheese and... I like something crunchy, so instead of potato chips, I do pork skins, which are no carbs and all uh, all protein. So pork skins. I don't. Sorry. Pork skins. Pork skins, yeah. What's that? They're it's fried pig skin, basically. I can grab a bag and show you. It's they're right over there. Really? But, it's not pork rinds, is it? Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah, another name for them, I think. Oh. Yeah. You know, those are hard to find here. They're not that popular in Canada. <laughs> yeah, well, but you got you got maple marshmallows, so it's yeah. a trade-off. A little bit, yeah. I found out. I thought it'd be hard, um, but I find them all over. Uh, the um, the thing I was out in Utah, and I could get keto bread, which is the way keto works. And I don't want to get it all crazy on it, but is you take the grams of carbs and subtract the grams of fiber. So it's a real high fiber bread. Um, I tease my daughter-in-law. You can already taste the sawdust in it. But, um, <laughs> it's actually not bad. But once I got away from Utah and Montana, I can't find it. So... Yeah. Um, but I can find low carb wraps and I do wraps and, you know, so. Well, good for you. It's kind of the big. What was that? Just, every, everybody's like about pig skins all of a sudden, except for Papa Drew. Yeah, One of know, them was a barf. He's all about the cake though. <laughs> 
My auntie says they come in flavors. Do they? I don't know. I just find the one kind. Yeah, I like the barbecue. Oh. I like the barbecue oh. one. So. I don't know. I've been tossing around the idea of keto too, just to shed a few, but. It works. I could also try walking. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have two cousins who are physical therapists and I was visiting them a year ago and uh, they're up in Maine. And I mentioned that I wanted to walk, but my hip really hurt. If mm -hmm. I get a half a mile and it was real, I was in pain they coming back the half mile, just plain hurt. And Chrisanna said, so walk, lose weight. Your hip won't hurt anymore. And she was right. You know, I, now if I go over four miles, it hurts a little bit, mm -hmm. but you know, Actually, when I had my, my physical the other day, the doctor took one look at my legs and went, I can tell you walk. Your calves so, are probably pretty strong, hey? Yeah, my, but now i got to work on this part. <laughs> oh, that's always tons of fun. Badge asks, how's your cat doing? Oh, she's still crazy. Um, a friend of mine forgot about her and tried to pet her, and she nailed him with both paws and started to bite. Um, she's a guard cat. <laughs> well, she just walked she doesn't by. Like but... people? Um, well, she's a calico, and all calicos are crazy, at least in my experience. Uh, especially the dirt calicos. She's if she pops up, she probably will hop up here at some point. But um when we first got her as a kitten 12 years ago, my wife had just gotten sick and the kitten decided that she needed to protect this this new litter mate or claw, you know. And so she would just straight up attack anybody who came to the house. And I was working at a Girl Scout camp. The girls would come up to the door and tap their fingers on the door about five feet up. And this little kitten would jump the five feet and oh. try to get their fingers. So that became like the game around camp. Um, <laughs> Gina's right. And can um, be the attack cat. She decided that it was her job to actually my kid Cammy likes you badge. You know, he's a, one of the few people that she he came on, he was helping me do something. She's rubbing up against him. And although I tell people that if she rubs up against you, it's a trick. She's trying to get <laughs> the fingers fingers closer so she can get some fresh meat. Um she used to just anybody got on the bus, she'd straight up attack them. And she just went by again. It's race and tear time, so it's back and forth on the bus. And um, come here, Cammy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Up here. Gina says she's cool yeah. with you if you don't show her any attention. Mind you, she looks like a kitten still. Well, here she is. We have a question for you. Um, Boondock Charlie asks, is it easy to find Boondock parking spots in a bus compared to a van? Like, is it more difficult with the bus? Um, well, there's no way a bus is stealthy. So, <laughs> no? No. <laughs> Here's Cammy. Oh, oh, look at the coloring on her. You know, she does look a little ferocious. Okay, I'm about to I'm about to lose some blood. <laughs> <laughs> She's not a big she'll curl up with me, curl up want to be scratched while I'm driving, but does not like to be picked up. But yeah, yeah um I use free campsites.net a lot and I look for places that for boondocking with RVs. Um I've been in some spots. Uh there's one on the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, right on the shores of Lake Superior. I went in, I parked, and I the locals would go there to go watch the sunset. I had a beautiful sunset over Lake Superior every night. And I would see them coming, and their eyes would get big, like, how did you get the bus back here? I just pushed through. Uh, I pushed a few few small limbs out of the way. <laughs> but 
How are you for backing up though? Like even me at the ambulance, if I want to back up, because I don't have a camera in there, I'll open both doors now to look back because right. through the mirror does nothing like the, the rear view mirror, but otherwise it's the sides, but I have a hard time uh, understanding I, like the depth perception when it comes to the side mirrors. Well, I have a backup camera, but it's covered in dust right now. So I really can't see much. I really mm -hmm. should wash that off. Um, I learned to drive in a Volkswagen Bug and a full-size Chevy van. So the van, actually, I took my road test in the van. Oh. Yeah, the, the, uh, the guy, the tester, he opened the door. He goes, are you sure? I went, yeah, get in. Come on. Um, <laughs> so I learned to drive using the mirrors. And at one point, I had a 57 Chevy step van, and there's no windows for me to look out, so I had to use the mirrors. Mm -hmm. I drove it back and forth to work. I pulled into a parking spot and looked at all the windows at the factory where somebody watching me just back in. And I went in, and they were how did you? How can you back that huge thing in there? It's like it's the same size as your pickup truck. It's just taller and cooler. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so I when I got to college, I Gina's saying yeah, she watched yeah. you back in several times between Aaron's bus and that huge ditch. Very yeah. impressive. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh in college, I volunteered. I was a 46-year-old freshman. So they really yes. That Living in a dorm the first semester was quite the experience. I got a house after that. But um, so that's a whole other story. But um, I ended up being the driver for the snowshoe racing team and the canoe team. Well, I back, backed up, back the trailer into a road so I could turn around. And uh, the dean of fun, who was the, the, main guy for this he said you know how to back up a trailer we need you on the canoe team <laughs> so i became you know pit crew for the canoe team and at one point we borrowed a 32 foot war canoe and had 12 people paddling this we had a 36 foot long trailer to haul this around on and me driving it and it was during a three-day race, and the guy who ran the race knew me because, um, well, I don't know, I stand out in the crowd. And he went over the loudspeakers and said, Steve, where's your crew? I said, they're 20, or five minutes behind the guys who just came in. He said, get your trailer down here so we can get that barge out of the way. State troopers stopping the traffic so I could back that down the hill. And I looked up at him and his mouth's hanging open. He can't believe I'm back in this huge trailer down the hill and pull it up, pull out. So hopping in a school bus, easy, not that big a deal. Hey, it's only 33 <laughs> feet long. Um, although I don't have a door handle anymore on the side door in the back because I sort of brushed up against the tree. <laughs> I miss the tree on the driver's side, but the passenger side, oops. <laughs> I don't use that door anyway. Yeah, not a big yeah. deal. I get extras. <laughs> but, you know, once in a while, I don't back into places too fast. And I will stop and go back and see how close I am to a tree. Um, backing into a campsite. If I go to, if I stay in a, in a state park or something like that, or designated campsites, that's, that's even easier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think when we first got the bus and I was still trying to figure it out, I'd stop, went back behind the bus, measured how far it was to the tree, came up to the front of the bus, measured back from my window a little bit less than that, made a mark in the ground and backed up till I was even with the mark. And then I was oh. fine. That's such a good idea. Yep. I can I'm come up with use a, that. Yep. And it usually works. Well, <laughs> and with, with uh, 
what Gina said about me backing in, part of it was I had a rug that I laid out right outside my door. And I, when I run into town for whatever, I'd leave it there. When I backed in, backing into that spot was easy. I backed up till a rug was right next to the door and I'm done. So that helped, but I still had to back up into that. And I've gotten faster and faster at it, but. So now this fits in with my next question. Now, Badge says he's, he's my educated brain. If I need history questions, I call Steve. He's very educated. And you said you were a freshman at 47. Okay, 46. I got to oh, know. Don't make me older. Oh, 46. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I worked at Eastman Kodak and for 27 years. And they were downsizing big time. Matter of fact, uh, my whole plant ended up closing, which it, my department, I don't know how many people we had, but um, I wanted to be laid off in uh, beginning of May because I had it all lined up to go hike the Finger Lakes Trail, which is about 450 miles. I figured that would get me out of work in the factory and get my brain around what am I going to do next. Mm -hmm. And then my son graduating from high school, and then I had a job lined up at Boy Scout camp and ready to go to college in the fall. They laid me off August 24th. So that screwed up all of those plans. Um, so August, I celebrated every year as my Independence Day. And seven days later was our 25th wedding anniversary. And that day, our son went in the Air Force. Three days later, I was 300 miles away in college, going through orientation, meeting my new roommate, which was interesting. Um, I, I knew I was going to get laid off. So I had this already. I actually had called the college before I called my wife. I called the college and said, all right, I just got laid off. Get the get the stuff rolling so I can be there. Find me a spot to stay. I'll see you in ten days. And um, I had been working with the same woman up there the whole time. And um, we were known for our cheesecakes. So if we ever meet, I'll make you a nice cheesecake. But oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I made a cheesecake for the admissions people and came in and said. Thank you for all you did to get me up, get me everything lined up so I could be here. Um, but anyway, I went for, uh, it was a two-year college called Paul Smith's. It's in the middle of the Adirondack Mountains. I went for a two-year program uh, in outdoor recreation. Because I've been working in a factory and I'm trying to figure what, I like computers, I like, but my real joy was the time I spent as a scoutmaster Mm -hmm. taking the boys out and teaching them all kinds of, you know, wilderness camping and, and all that. I did that. My troop went camping every single month. And a lot of the scoutmasters couldn't figure out how I did it. And I said, it's easy. Every single month, one weekend, I go camping. That's what I do. My wife and daughter were in Girl Scouts. My son and I were in Boy Scouts. My wife and I cross-trained. So I was a, trained as a Girl Scout leader. And when I actually, when I got a job being a ranger at a Girl Scout camp, um, I had been a Girl Scout longer than the human resources lady who was doing all the paperwork with me. Yeah, she was amazed. I'm like, I got a daughter. Of course I'm, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great that you both. But anyway, so I got laid off. I get up there. Um, within a week, I was on the committee to design a four-year program. I blame it on the, the Boy Scout leader tattoo. I can't read it, but it says, we'll volunteer, just ask. <laughs> and so I ended up designing the program, which was nice because I knew what courses to take and planned it out so that I was able to get my bachelor's in three years. Nice. Came back to teach the following fall. I, they asked me to help teach Introduction to Forestry, which is weird because I was an outdoor rec person, not a forestry major. But they figured at that point, I was 48. 
and the kids would listen to me more than they would the 20 year old, which mm. is what usually ends up happening. The third person is somebody who just graduated. Um, they didn't pay me much. And I did work summer camp that year. I used what I earned at summer camp to buy a teepee. And I was the crazy teacher that lived in the woods. No way. Yeah. Um, I came into class one day around Thanksgiving and uh, our Thanksgiving, not your Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, um, the whole class shut up. And 50 forestry students never were quiet. There's always some murmurs going on. And I'm like, what? They said, how's the teepee? Oh, it's fine. Why? Well, it's 21 below zero Fahrenheit. We were all taking bets. You weren't going to make it. It's cold in our dorm rooms. I went, I don't know. I was sleeping. I didn't notice it got cold. Oh. I had a Army surplus Arctic bag that was inspected December 1952. I was born January 53. So that sleeping bag and I were the same age. We were meant for each other. <laughs> Warmest sleeping bag I've ever been in. And um, the faculty was always telling me they had spare rooms. It all got too cold. I'm like, it's fine. I'm good. You know, um, I decided during that semester to go to grad school and had to give three references. And the two that got back to me was the, the lead teacher of the team and my old camp director. And they said that they weren't sure they should have answered the one question the way they did. They said, is Steve comfortable in the outdoors? And they both said, well, it's way below zero. He's living in a teepee, shows up for work every day. I'm gonna go with, yeah, he's pretty comfortable <laughs> living outdoors. So I got a master's in out in uh, recreation administration. Wow, uh, you uh, are so intriguing. I could just spend weeks getting to know you and hear all your are stories. You just gonna have to come down here and hang out. I know. <laughs> um, we've hit that hour mark, but Papa Drew had a question earlier. I just wanted to see if I can find that. It was about something about a swing, the swing stuff I don't understand. Wait, did I? Am I going too fast here? <laughs> oh, here. Oh, what is your tail swing? How many feet is the question? And um, he has an eight foot tail swing. Yeah, my I've got about eight feet behind the rear axle. My, my bus is a um, flat nose front engine. So I sit in front of the front wheels. So I overhang the front end uh, by about five feet and about eight feet. Um, my wheelbase actually fits in one parking spot. So technically, I, uh, technically, officer, I only have to feed one parking meter. I'm just hanging off into the other two a little bit. Um, <laughs> I try not. Oh, to yeah, would they really make you pay for two if you're at a? I, I've, ne I've never. Te well, when I went to Fort Sumner, um, I couldn't park in the parking garage where everybody else parked. I parked on the street. I parked way down. There was nobody there. It was a weekday in the middle of winter, and I, I only paid the one. And actually, I, I the reason I picked that spot is I was hanging off into where there was a fire hydrant. I wasn't oh. in the spot, hanging into it a little bit. So I only fed the one meter, and I worried the whole time. Um, <laughs> nah, nobody cared. But for the most, and because in that area there isn't a place to park that doesn't have a parking meter, mm, so mm -hmm. I don't push it. Um, if I can find a parking lot, you know, I'll park way in the corner. Um, if you ever caught in Cape Cod, uh, out to Provincetown, there is one place that I finally found where I could park my bus. And they charged me double because I was going to take two spots. And I was like, fine, you know, in 20 minutes, I got to be over there for the whale watch. So, um, yeah, I was fine with paying that. It's just sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. 
yeah, next time I'll leave the bus and take a shuttle. So. Oh, there's a bunch of comments in there. Are you reading them? I'm That's trying to, but. Papa Drew's like Chris Travel's bus. Very cool. I've done that. I'm not sure which no. part that was. Van City Adventures says parking spots are so small. Bob's Adventure buses are cool, but too big for him. I think the biggest he wants to go is an ambulance. Yeah. No, the Gina short likes buses, the short ones. Gina's got a short bus at uh, Wanderboom. Eric just rebuilt for her. And Ooh. I can't wait. I want to do a tour of it. Um, because every Saturday on my channel, I've got a tour of somebody else's bus. And at Schooly Palooza, that's pretty much what I do, is yes. I try to get as many tours as possible. And I've got enough to get me through till the end of February. Um, at which point, I now have a better camera. So it's going to be much better lighting and much better, um, just better. Uh, yeah. I've got more. I've got more toys. I got a new computer, better editing. So, mm -hmm. you know. well, that'll be interesting. Actually, Wander Boom is going to be here on Wednesday. Yep, and I hopefully I'll be someplace where I can watch. So, <laughs> you catch it on the replay. <laughs> yep. Well, I I admit I've done that a couple times. So, <laughs> want to see what I was getting myself into? Oh, oh no. I hope you didn't watch the 13 hour live stream. I think I was even starting no. to fall asleep at the end of that one. <laughs> I I saw that and I looked at the time and went, I knew you. It was crazy. I did not expect my day to go that way. And Badge kept popping in and out going, you're still live? You're still live? <laughs> yeah. Well, Badge, that's the only way I know what day it is. Uh, every Saturday, the video comes up. And Badge says, oh, hey, it's Saturday. Ah. Steve's video's up. So. All right. Wow. So, oh, my goodness. I don't want to keep you too long, but, like, we still have 25 people watching, Steve. Can I, like, oh, don't can worry I take about it. some more of your time? No, that's fine. Um, okay. What was it? A, an old scout buddy of mine said that, uh, he was vaccinated with a phonograph needle, and it's pretty much me just saying, mm, 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 I'll talk forever. Well, so, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'll probably have laryngitis tomorrow, but yeah. I'll just have the odd sip of water. What is that? That's ice. Oh, is that raspberry? No, this is black cherry. Oh, yeah. I've had them. I like those too. I tried, um, I tried all kinds of them. I sort of like the, I've always liked black cherry pops and stuff. So, mm -hmm. well, and that goes in well with keto because there's no sugar. Well, it's that there's nothing, no carbs. There's one, there's one thing that really puzzles me is you can buy at Walmart these quart bottles of flavored water that have zero, 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 zero down the list per serving. There's three servings in each bottle. And how does that go from zero carbs to 10 or something like that? I mean, it's, I think it's just, it's zero because for one serving, it falls just below enough, the one. Right. But then they multiply it up and they got to round up. Uh, it's sort of weird. Mm -hmm. but, Going green mom's like, she loves listening to the stories. Papa Drew's like, please hit the thumbs up, share it, leave a comment. It all helps. Thank you, Papa Drew. Yep. 12 hours to go. <laughs> 12 hours to go. No. Oh, I'm not no. going to do that to you. See, 12 hours from now. I will be an hour into my drive towards the Grand Canyon of Pennsylvania. That's my next stop. What's the Grand Canyon of Pennsylvania? It's, I've never been there. It's, that's what it is. It, I've never been there. Uh, the way I find my places is I look on the maps and I've got, and it's over there. Uh, I've got atlases that if it's in red, it's some sort of high, some in some point of interest. Oh, okay. I've known about it. It's Pine Creek Canyon. Um, 
I don't know. Sounds interesting. So, and I don't know how the fall colors are in Pennsylvania. Right now, in the Adirondacks, they're peaking or just a little bit past peak, just starting to change here. Um, chances are, as I drive south, I'm going to be just ahead of it. So, be a nice time. Uh, you know, so uh, I'll go there and see what's there. And you can get some awesome pictures with your new camera. That's it. Actually, my brother just gave me another one. So now I got three GoPros. So, yeah, I can do all kinds of fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, you could. You could get really technical if you wanted. Yeah. Um, we'll see. See how that all goes. But They always say you need a lot of footage to do even a short video. But holy moly. Like, honestly, when you went to start YouTube, did you realize how much work it was before you started it? It's not that much work. You don't think so? No. Um, maybe, well, one of the best sort of sideways compliments I got was somebody said, I love his channel. It's not polished. I'm like, yeah, thanks, I guess. <laughs> um <laughs> Which way do I feel like taking that one today? I I do a lot of short clips, and I figure out how I want to put them together. And I'm usually telling a story. Mm -hmm. So I'm just doing the clips. And sometimes I don't put the mistakes in, although next this coming Thursday's video, there is a mistake when I flew my drone into a wall because I figured, oh, this is too weird because you can see my face. Just watch my face as the drone backs into a wall. Now, well, just a reminder for anybody that's watching, if you already don't have Steve, Steve, Punk, blah, 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 Steve Punk, Steve, that's a tongue twister. His channel link is in the description below on this video. So definitely check it out if you haven't yet. You'll be thankful that you did. Yep. Very well, thankful that you did. Um, Strong's Adventure says to you, um, Rhonda said, don't waste your time on the Grand Canyon of Arkansas. She was there last week. Okay. Well, in Arkansas, I think there's a diamond mine I want to go to. Okay. Yeah, if you like what you do, it's not yep. work. That is so true. Well, we'll see you, Strong's Adventures. Thanks so much for coming out. Bye. Yeah. What is this? You need a light for some of those tours, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I tried oh. that. Um, the, what happens is the um, I was using a GoPro 3. GoPro 3 is not real good in low light. And with a schoolie, the windows are so bright especially out in the desert where I do a lot of these, that the camera adjusts itself for that brightness and uh, it's actually dark inside. So a lot of them, well, the way it's lit right here on, on the camera on my computer, mm -hmm. that's probably well lit compared to some of the, uh, the ones. And I've got all the lights on right now. Mm -hmm. And um, the... I've got a GoPro 8 now that does real well. And uh, yeah, that doesn't work. I don't know. All of a sudden, both the dogs just woke up and they're pawing. I mean, I'm trying to pet them without moving too much. <laughs> and then she yeah. jumps up. But she, she's such a silly kid. But um, now I got the GoPro 8. It works real well in low light conditions. It's, it's like going from old analog TV to high def. Mm. So hopefully that's going to make a lot of difference. And all of those tours are they like uh, Chris does his tours are like a half an hour long and he really gets into the B-roll and all that. And mine are I let the owners take the give us a tour. So Show me your bus. I'm just going to yeah. follow along with the camera. I might ask a question, but usually 
they just tell us about their bus. Sometimes, like one the other day, a couple weeks ago, it was like four minutes long. Short bus, not a, you know, she showed everything, but there wasn't a whole lot to show. Somebody mm-hmm. else got a full-size bus and really wants to brag about a lot of stuff, it can go longer. Yeah. So there's a guy coming up that's about 25 minutes long, but he had a really cool bus. So, yeah. um, so do doing all these tours give you ideas that you ever want to incorporate? Like, would you ever do another build? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah? Um, I said something about on my next bus. And my son goes, you just finished this one. What are you, what's this next bus? And when everybody who owns a bus talks about what would they change on the next bus? See, on this one, I designed this to be handicap accessible okay. because my wife was my wife was using a chair and a lot of it, a lot of the the idea of this was um She'd been sick about five years, four years when we got it. And I wanted to change the view outside of her window all the time. Take her places, you know, if I could, if wheelchair, then I would do, do that. Um, I talked about trying to get in shape so I give a backpack to carry her. Uh, I mean, in the, she lost a lot of weight. She was down like 98 pounds and... I can't lift 98 pounds very well, but um, so that was the idea, but I spent a couple of years designing it. So when she passed away, I just went, I'm not changing the design. I'm just going to keep doing what I do. So I have a central aisle and the handicapped door, the lift is still back there. The, my shower, my bathroom is like five feet by the width of the bus. And that's one big, huge shower pan back there. So, you know, it's designed for someone with a disability to be able to use it. Yeah. So uh, if I, when I do another bus, I'll probably have a garage in the back and shorten it up and have, instead of having, I've got bunks on either side. Uh-huh. So I might do a, a bigger bed. Um, <laughs> I've had a, a, I give tours of it all the time and I've had a few, a uh, women friend go, that's an awful small bunk. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm cuddly. So, <laughs> but it is really set aside for small bunks for two, you know. Mm-hmm. So, it's the way it is. I don't know. When you started talking about your wife there, it took everything I had to not break into tears. I was like, oh, reeling it in, reeling it in. <laughs> that is so sweet. That's, that's love. That's yeah. the most beautiful well, thing. There's a, uh, a picture I put up is on Facebook every once in a while is my profile picture, and it's at us at our wedding. And actually, it's it's up back there, um, and I can't take the screw to the wall, so I can't show you. But um, it's uh, at the wedding, her laughing at somebody and me just looking at her, and people always say, that's love. And yeah, 42 years together, my job was to make her laugh every day and uh her job was to not kill me because i made her coffee (laughs) oh oh, i'm gonna need a kleenex (laughs) (laughs) oh when you told me before you look at her picture and you have lunch with her every day i was like oh sorry (laughs) you are just the sweetest funniest smartest guy you're like a full meal deal, my friend. Yeah. Well, I, I at Cub Scout camp one year, I I told there was the packs were from my hometown. And I was having lunch with the with all the, the moms and I mentioned I was God's gift to women. And they went, Yeah, yeah, sure, Steve. And I said, Look it, I cook, I clean up after myself, I do all of my own laundry. And I worked the graveyard shift, so my wife has the whole bed to herself. And went, you, you are God's gift to women. Do you got a brother? <laughs> yeah. Total opposite. So I don't oh, take myself so seriously funny. at all. I mean, life's too short. Let's have fun. You know, I'll 
I'm my own slapstick comedy tour. So I don't know. You've already in a short time brought a lot of joy into my life. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> so much. Whew. Okay, you guys, before I have to let him go, does anybody have an important pressing question for Steampunk Steve? It's going to take a minute before it shows up to us on StreamYard because there's a lag that way. So if like, you got a good uh, question, it's now nomadic, or when you watch his channel later. <laughs> like Nomadic Rat Pack once, he said he'd buy my bus. So they said they'd buy my bus. Um, I'm like, somebody, my local friend of mine, well, actually my old landlord um, that I'd known for 30 years, but he uh, he posted a picture of my bus and said, you know, I, I disappear and then I show back up. And and somebody said, will he sell his bus? And Arthur said, short answer, no. Long answer, no. <laughs> and I said, well, if offered a ridiculous amount of money, yeah, I'd sell the bus. And then I just build another one. Yeah. So, but I found out doing Aaron's bus that at 67, three quarter inch plywood weighs a lot more than it did when I was 62. Yeah, I so, bet. Yeah. But, yeah, that makes a difference. Yeah, I can still do it. So Badge wants to know when you're going to Squatterville. Probably January. Yep, because uh, Schoolie Palooza is February 1st through the 10th, and it's right in that general area. So, you know. I figured after the first of the year, I'll start wandering west. You know, whether I go north a little bit or I zigzag around the country. I've been in New Orleans in a couple of years. So I know a spot in New Orleans where I can park about two blocks away from the French market. And just five minutes walk to some really fabulous restaurants. So I'll probably spend a few days there getting fat. Well, Scout oh. says when it cools down, it's still a hundred degrees Fahrenheit there today. Yeah. Holy moly, that's very different than where I'm at. Well, that's why I left uh, Ehrenberg. Was in uh, the end of April. We had a week. Yeah. The um. The, we had a, the end of April. We had a week where it was over hundred every single day. And when it was 107 outside, I put a shade on the south side, put a tarp. So the south side of my bus was shaded, but not the roof. And I think it got up to 112 inside the bus. And I, Cammy, my cat, was melting. Um, <laughs> and I just, I figured that when I left there, that the inside of my bus had been sterilized. I wasn't worried about any any bugs, any viruses in my bus. <laughs> it basically faked it out. Um, uh, but I, yeah. we I'd get up in the morning and start working at 8, and by 2 in the afternoon, when it got up almost to 100, we just stopped. And I drank a lot of water and sat oh, around. Oh, yeah. You'd have to. to. You know. And Cammy stays on the bus. I do have a harness for her that I could put on. And she got off a couple times, and the trouble is she blends into the desert. Her name is Cami. It's short for Cami Flage because ah. she, she just disappears. I, she's curled up on a pillow that's mostly blue, pink, and white, and I can't see her. She just blends right in somehow. So, <laughs> yeah, I call oh, her my, my furry goodness. overlord too. So. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you're so funny. I guess it's 85 in Oregon today. Yep. Wow. It's, it's uh, 61. It got to 61 here today. Um, but it's clouded, clouded up a lot. Didn't rain, which is good, but. Yeah. Well, we're almost at an hour and a half. So I think I should probably <laughs> let you off the hook. <laughs> I've still got another hour before I go to go to bed and hour and a half before I actually go to sleep. So 
Very cool interview, folks. I'll surely check out Steampunk's channel. Thank you, Magnificent Germany with Darian, another one of my new friends. Um, yeah, there was a lot of great people here in the chat today. And yep. yeah, I think, Badge, we were about the same, only 42. I just have to so, do conversion. <laughs> just what everybody knows is that um, what Badge mentioned about history is my channel, I focus on little known or sometimes well known historic places. So, or just odd places like the Vinegar Museum in South Dakota. I highly recommend that because there's a Vinegar Museum. You haven't been anywhere until you've been to the Vinegar Museum and been to their tasting bar. Yes. Oh, you the find the funnest thing. Tasting bar. Um, there's what was tomorrow's video is oh yeah schooly graveyard school bus graveyard here that nobody and very few people in this town know about it's like a myth and i finally tracked it down so it's but it's a few buses from the 40s that's all i'm going to say there's not a whole it's not a very long video but it's just but we cool. have to check it out yeah, so make please. sure you guys, you subscribe, you ring the bell so you get those little marks around it so you get the notifications. I'm learning that too. There's sometimes I'm like, how come I didn't catch something when I'm subscribed to someone, but I didn't hit ring the bell. So I'm definitely going to make sure. And Badge says, yeah, you're one of the best at history videos. Nomadic Rat Pack says, how do you always seem to get the best people to interview? I'm just lucky. I guess the best people are the ones that are the kindest and willing to come onto my channel. <laughs> yep. and I've, some of the best people I've ever met are van dwellers and bus dwellers and a few ambulance dwellers. Just the odd chicken and ambulance. <laughs> yeah, I know a couple. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I had so much fun. Maybe someday again, we'll have you back on. I would rather get the opportunity to sit down and have coffee with you sometime, but that might be a year or more before that can happen. But just so you know, I don't, I don't drink coffee. I wake up like this. What? Yeah. I'm one of those weird people. Oh, heck. Short story. Okay. Well, I'm full of stories, but I love my stories. Wife, my wife and I had been married a year, and we moved into this college town where I'm actually right at right now. And our habit on Sunday was to walk up to the diner, have breakfast, buy the Sunday paper, come back, curl up and read the paper, and then decide what we wanted to do. Drizzly fall day. I'm bebopping down the sidewalk. She's dragging her butt along behind me, and she stops. And I turned around and said, what? She goes, you're freaking disgusting. Nobody wakes up that happy and without coffee. And I'm like, get used to it. This is me. And from that day forward, I would get up before her. I would make her coffee. A couple of times I actually set it on the table, pushed it closer to her with a stick, and quietly backed out of the room. And... I got really good at making her coffee, especially when she got sick. I would make a burr grinder, 30 seconds from bean to cup, get her this fresh brewed coffee, and she would take a couple sips and go, I guess she can live another day. <laughs> that, was, that was our whole thing. Um, when she'd be in the hospital, nurses would, I'd get the nurses to play along asking her about how her eye muscles and her neck muscles were so strong. And she'd go, because every day he gets me going, Chase. <laughs> My kids call that mom exercises because yeah, they, she, I always got her shaking her head, rolling her eyes. But hey. <sighs> I need to find a variation of you. And then I would no longer be single. Yeah, I'm out you here. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it's, yeah, no, you, if anybody in this chat is having relationship problems, just contact Steve because <laughs> he's talking all the right stuff. And it, 
it's it's thoughtful it's not that it's a huge expense it's not that it's like showing off it's just this genuine paying attention to the person that you love and doing the things that brings joy into their day i used to well my daughter when she had boy problems i said can i help she says you don't know because you don't understand guys i don't those guys that are idiots that don't treat other people and women right I don't know. I can't figure that out. I don't know why they do that. So I'm no help there. But I'm always, you know, always shoulder, cry on, I'll listen, you know. Um, you know, and I used to ask my wife, it's like, how how come all these young women and any women just open up to me? They I've been told some very intimate stuff on women I'd met like 10 minutes before. And she's like, probably because you look them in the eye, you actually listen to what they say. And that's yeah. the secret. Listen to what people say. Guess what? Women are smart. They're not that mysterious. Just talk to them. There's not some code behind everything we say. No. A lot of us is just, Although I'm still what I looking, think. And I'm if they're not looking. like that, then... Ignore I'm still it. looking for the operator's manual because there's some things I haven't figured out yet. But you know, <laughs> none of you women leave those things lying around. So you know what? We're still figuring it out ourselves. And I know right? that's just it. So am I. So everybody's everybody's still trying to figure it out. So we're all learning and growing and, and finding new things that bring us joy. And yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I, always learning is a, a huge part of being happy. <laughs> a badge. There's still 20 here? Yeah, badge. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's still here. He pops in and out. He doesn't usually stay too long. But you no. know, on this, you're going to have to pop back in again on the 16th. Make sure you have service because that night we're doing a special birthday bash for badge. Oh, I know. And I'm okay. not sure where I'll be, but I'm going to try to be someplace that I have some sort of coverage even if it's just yes. on my phone so should be fun what's this don't get them going you only have 10 hours left no i am not doing i'm not pulling an all-nighter you guys i actually have to work in the morning i don't i'm retired <laughs> well you know what all i gotta do is change stuff around this is what i gotta do i gotta oh wait which one do i hit this one and then i make you bigger and yeah, i have a nap and you can just visit with everybody. No, actually, I'm going to be driving in the morning, so I probably oh, should get, right. get some sleep. But, yeah. Um, oh, it's Steve, been fun. you're such a chick magnet. He I, is, isn't he? I'm Deb, I wondered where you were. <laughs> I've, I've known Deb for a long time. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we met the That's first time. That's another reason why you get along with women. You blah, 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 over years and ages. <laughs> yeah. I, I won't tell you that how that she's, um, I'm, no, I won't even mention it. But we, we met the first time I was in college. And we've been friends forever. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yep. That is so good. Well, what do you figure, Steve? Yep. I'll let you get some sleep. Actually, it's only 8 30. I haven't had supper though. I might do that. I have uh, my 10, son well, fend himself. I haven't figured these time things out. It's 10 30 here, so it yeah. doesn't make any sense to me at all that there's two hours difference somehow. Well, and my time my time never changes, but apparently my time zone technically does. And so we only have problems explaining my time zone to Americans because you guys don't have central standard time. You have central time, which I match up with nope. after November, but right now I'm mountain time. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. So you're like in the Arizona of Canada where. Yeah, okay. It, uh, yeah, it, that sounds yeah. good. Awesome, awesome, awesome interview. I know, right? See, there's my two biggest fans, I'm thinking, Badge and Deb. <laughs> <laughs> well, and me too. Don't forget Paula. Well, no, you, of course. I'm the newest one, but yeah. I'm in there. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you so much to everybody in the chat today for coming out and joining in. It's been a lot of fun today. Um, tomorrow I have... 
Saucy, the towboat chef. I always want to call it tugboat, but it's a towboat. So Saucy is going to be here tomorrow. And then I have Wander Boom on Wednesday and RV Reviews with the Air Force Guy on Thursday. So this is such a good week, hey? Yeah. Lots of interesting people, and I kicked it off at the best. And I only know one of them, so that means. <laughs> well, then you're going to have to watch. Exactly. See, I had a plan. I had a plan. Yeah. Gina says this was super fun. Thank you, Gina. And uh, Nomadic Rat Pack says, Steampunk Steve, thank you for spending time with us. Yeah, not a problem. I'm, and for anybody that, that knows, well, anybody has any kinds of questions about this, it's easy to find me. I'm on Facebook. There's, I've got a page. You can send me a message or any of my videos. If you comment, I get back to you right away. So, yeah. So everyone, absolutely. If you haven't checked them out, check the link below and um, sub to his channel. Tell and your friends, tell your neighbors. Yeah. yeah share his stuff out. Cause you have a new one coming out tomorrow. Right? Yep. Um, okay. I try to get one every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, I'm all set for this week, but that means as I head south, I will be hitting quite a few places. Gettysburg's on my list. Um, and that's probably going to be a series of three videos. So, Oh, I'm yeah. Lots of information. It, yeah. One for each day of the battle. So oh. I, it's an idea. We'll see if I can actually pull that one off. But that sounds uh, cool. Hopefully they're not going to be 13 hour videos, but you know, see how that goes. <laughs> that was a live stream and we split it into two. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, good night. Sweet dreams. You're very Thanks welcome. Thanks so much. It's Thanks been a everybody. Pleasure being here. See you. Good night.